Um, it's been a while since I posted the video. I made it through my first two weeks of physical therapy and I was so exhausted I practically slept after each session and then on some days I pushed myself so hard I was just did a lot of laps in the pool and stretching in the jacuzzi and I'm starting to get a little motion back in my neck and shoulders but I still don't have the strength to do anything with chip boards so I got really excited at my local scrapbook store I saw the circle flip book and I found a tutorial online so I thought I'd take you along with me on my journey and show you how I'm making this this is um, the video tutorial I'm using. I'll put a link on the bottom and if I have a chance to edit this video I'll also put it on the screen. So the first thing I wanted to show you is my new Cricut Expression. I broke down and bought it because it was only $200. I had the little one for a long long time and I saw so many neat things people were making that I just couldn't do with the smaller size. And this is a perfect example. And I'm so thankful for my Cricut right now because it's something I can do it's just putting the paper in and pressing a button and it's so kind and gentle to your body. Um, so um, for this um, project you need um, circles, um, four of pattern paper and four of cardstock. So I've got the, um, I just cut out my last circle on the Cricut here. The largest size circle you can make is 10 inches, so that's what I did. Because I really wanted mine to be as big as the one that I saw in the store which they got from Pinecone Press. You can also buy this as a kit at Pinecone Press. And Pinecone Press has a YouTube channel and they show you what their kit looks like and they show you how you can assemble it. I just didn't like the paper it came with. So anyways, um, this um, this is like an aqua polka dot paper and it's made by Bow Bunny. And um, hold on a sec, I'll tell you what it's called. So this is the 12 inch Island Mist Double Dot from Bow Bunny. It's a really pretty vintage aqua. So I know it's a little early to start thinking about Christmas, but I saw this um, beautiful, beautiful Christmas paper. I really like the soft, soft colors. I just can't handle the bright red and green and a lot of loud colors at Christmas time. I need something really calming. And everything here just feels so comfortable. It's really safe colors for me. I really um, feel like that nurturing feeling when I look at this paper and there's so many loud papers out there that I just have a hard time um, you know enjoying so um, sorry this is a, I thought it was Melissa Francis I just wanted to make sure this is um, a Melissa Francis paper I don't know if it's still available it's, I'm getting Virginia on here I think that might be the page design I don't know what the collection was called but um, all four of my Pattern papers are this pa this paper, and all four of my cardstock are the Bow Bunny Aqua Polka Dots. To cut out my circles, um, I use the George Basic Shapes cartridge that comes with the. Um, it, well, it came with my Baby Cricut when I first bought that. Um, I'm not sure what I got with the expression, but um, I tried a cutting system at the scrapbook store, and it, I was so unhappy. I I don't know who has a cutting system that makes these really cool nested circles, but you need something bigger than the nestability dies, and um, if you have a circle cutting system that works, that's fantastic, and I'm really happy that I just can cut this off my Cricut. So um, it's on uh, page 108 um, of the George booklet, and you can see it's just a regular circle. And since the Cricut um, cuts in qu one quarter inch, increments, that's exactly what you need for this project. So I just finished cutting my 10 inch circles, now I'm going to cut my pattern paper in 9 and 3 quarter inch circles. Hey guys, um, before I cut out this um, into a circle, I just wanted you to get a sense for the whole design of this paper. It is just so beautiful. There's some more left at the store. I would just love to buy every single last page they have. But I'm on a budget right now, so... I'm even surprised at myself that I wanted to make something for Christmas, but the second I saw this paper I knew this is exactly the uh, paper I wanted to use for this project. The one thing I love about my expression is you can actually see what you're going to be cutting. I never had that before on the Baby um, Cricut, and I can't tell you guys how helpful that is. I can't tell you the number of times I cut the wrong image and wasted paper. This really has turned out to be a fantastic feature. I've been jealous of all these features that um, Cricut Expression owners have had 
and um, this is such a joy. I'm, this is probably the second time I've ever used this. So um, anyway, so you can see, I don't know if you can see on the screen. Um, I've now I'm doing my nine and three quarter inch circle. Hey guys, um, I, well I just finished cutting out my last circle, and um, I just had a little glitch on the edge of one of them. So um, I just wanted to tell people um, if you haven't done this before. This is, I put it next to the highest on speed and pressure, and that seemed to um, solve the problem. I also think I had something, um, some leftover paper uh, stuck on the mat, and it got stuck on it somewhere. Um, I found that these mats don't last very long, um, not as long as the Cricut people say they should. Uh, but I just wanted to show you, um, when I had my baby Cricut, um, it was very difficult to... Um, get a piece of paper to come off the uh, the mat. And I want to show you how easy it is to lift it off the big mat. Hold on a second. So my son is holding Harry's playing video games behind me, so look at how easy that is. I would have never been able to have done that on my baby cricket mat. Usually it sticks so hard that when I finally pull this off, it's just like curling. And I have to put a book weight on it to get it to weigh down. So I was really happy about that. Okay. So I have four circles in the pattern paper and four circles in the cardstock all ready um, to assemble. Everything is cut. I think it took me 10 minutes at the most. And if you're having difficulties with shoulder or neck pain or arthritis or you had a rotor rotator cuff injury or anything like that, if anybody's ever hung out in a physical therapy place, you've heard all the injuries, you know all the aches and pains people go through. This is the most wonderful thing to do. It's very therapeutic when you're not feeling well and it is so easy on the body. I am so appreciative that I have this. So I'm going to start the assembly process and I'll be back in a minute. Hey guys. Um, so um, I just followed the first assembly instructions and I just wanted to show you some of the tools that I use. First you fold your circle in half and then um, using the, um, you use a bold folder to burnish it and then using um, uh, this as a guide, you flip it over and you fold it in half again so the two uh, score lines meet right here. And then you open it up and then you want to cut one of the vertical lines from the edge of the circle to the center. And um, so the tools of choice that I have for that task is I heard a lot of great things about the Martha Stewart X-Acto knife and everything they say about it is true. It was absolutely the best X-Acto knife I've ever tried. Um, the blade has lasted a long time um, and I haven't had to replace it yet. And this is the Tonic Studios glass cutting mat and I love this because um, when you want to make sure things are aligned um, what I do is um, I use these grid lines so because I want to make sure I couldn't with I have also this etiology uh, ruler and I couldn't see because um, the paper is so light and the ruler is see-through it was hard to know whether um, I was on the fold line so I put the fold line on this black line and then I made sure the other fold line was on that black line then I put my ruler against the fold line by making sure that it was aligned there on that black line and this black line. So in theory everything is aligned on this black line. Then I took a pen and ran it down to make sure that I did in fact have the fold line, which I did, and then I went ahead and um, used my X-Acto knife to, to cut the slit. So I can't say enough wonderful things about this ruler and this glass cutting mat from Tonic Studios. It's really, really fabulous. I got it half off or 40% off at joannes.com and it's been such a great investment. Okay, so I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so I just did the next step in the tutorial and basically what you do after you've cut your first line, you um, go to the opposite side of that line um, working on the same quarter of the circle and you use the same cutting technique I showed you and you, leave, you cut um, the rest of the wedge out leaving a half inch um, uh, strip strip remaining. Um, so, um, okay, so on to the next step. Okay, I finished all the steps um, for the circle that you that you need to do for each of your 
cardstock circles. Um, after you finish um, with um, taking the wedge out and you've got your flap, you cut off uh, the corners at a 45 degree angle on both edges and then you um, flip this up and then you flip this back and that's it and apparently we just do this four times if you can see um, my edges aren't aligning and um, it kind of ripped there um, but I just did the best I could so I'm going to hope for the best um, sorry, the lighting might be different um, each time I start and stop the video. I forget to turn the light on. Sometimes it's too bright when I do that. Um, there's a lot of sunlight today, so um, hopefully this isn't. Uh, hopefully the lighting is going to turn out on this. Okay, the next step is to take your pattern paper and do the same thing you did with your cardstock, um, i.e., folding the circle in half and half again. And then using your ruler and your cutting board, um, you actually cut on all the score lines so you get four um, separate wedges from your circle. Okay, I'm back um, to show you the next steps. Um, you need X number of these wedges, um, a qu a quarter circle wedges, and then you need X amount of 1 8 inch circles. So what she did was she folded the quarter um, circle segments in half and then cut on the fold line to get your eighth of a circle segments and they look like that and so then when you go back to your base cardstock you put your quarter segments in, um, of pattern paper on the quarter segments of uh, the cardstock and then you take your eight inch segments and you put them in the eight inch uh, segments and it looks like in order to get a nice um, edge of pattern of uh, the cardstock showing through you basically have to um, sorry uh, you basically have to adhere them so that um, there's no gap between them and that will allow you to have um, at that that's the only way it fits onto the cardstock and as you can see um, I did cut my measure my circles precisely and I also cut my pattern paper precisely and I don't know why this is happening but I have a very thin edge and it broadens out to a fatter edge don't know why but um, anyways um, I'm gonna stop for now my shoulders are starting to get real achy so I'm gonna take a soak in the jacuzzi and come back and finish up hey guys I'm back um, I have a very wonderful sun he gave me a back massage for an hour and I took a really long hot shower and I'm feeling a lot better um, I wanted to share something with you before I have to move on to the next step, sort of something I learned. Um, I was telling you earlier that um, the border didn't seem to be um, the same width uh, in each of my segments, but once I taped it down, it looked a lot better, and I also tried something else. Um, for example, when I tried this piece, um, it was very thin border here and then a fat border there. So I just kept going through all my um, quarter circle segments until I found one that seemed to fit and give me a nice quarter inch um, border. And the other thing I wanted to tell you is um, if you have a one directional paper, um, be careful on how you fold your circles because not all of them are going to work out so they look um, like they're upside right. For example, this one here, um, if I place it here, it's going to look upside down in my um, my book so this might be unusable um, but you can always use it um, for embellishment um, so anyways um, I'm going to show you an, an, another thing that I learned in a second so just to make sure that you know for sure before you glue your pieces down that it's going to be upside right this is uh, how the page is going to stand so the sections where you folded it into eighths are going to lay on the bottom. And so just to reconfirm, I can see, okay, these are both going to be standing um, right side up. And then the glue I'm using is um, ATG. Um, and um, that's somewhat repositionable as opposed to the super uh, sticky tape. So if you make a mistake, I just pulled one up and put one right back down and it worked out fine so hold on a second I'll, and I'll show you how uh, these uh, this page gets assembled 
Okay, so now that I've got my paper uh, adhered to uh, the, t uh, the quarter sections, um, what you do is you put a, um, super sticky tape on that little half inch section and then, see if I can do this on my own, you take it off and you um, adhere it to the right side of your two um, eighth, uh, um, eight, one eighth circle sections. And um, I'm going to do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I forgot to remind you guys um, to cut off on this half inch section like I showed earlier um, a 45 degree angle um, at the corner. Otherwise it's going to overlap and it's not going to fit on the back side. But I'm going to flip this over and this is what it looks like. This is one um, of the four um, pages that you need to assemble before you put your project together. Um, I made another one. Um, I'm going to grab it. Sorry, I've got, I'm on my own here with the video camera. And <laughs> you can see my boo boo. This is upside down, so I learned that one the hard way. Wasn't paying attention. And also, it's absolutely overkill with one pattern paper or um, maybe. Uh, my solution to that, you know, either one pattern paper is just, I don't know, to me that's too much. I wish I'd put a different pattern paper here. So I might not use this page. I might go to the store and redo this page. Um, but um, this is a much better look. Um, it's not so overwhelming. And um, so at this time I got my pages upside right on both sides. And then there's the 1 8 inch sections here. And um, you're going to be able to get a sense for how this is going to start to assemble. So here's two. And then I've got two more to go. And then we can start to um, tape the sections together. Okay, here's my fourth circle. And this is the another thing I learned. is I never thought it would be so difficult to get a circle um, to fold in half evenly. But... Um, if you fold your circle in half like I did here and then you align it on one side so it looks you know closely aligned and then you just press across from there if you flip it over you can see okay that is very 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 close but then when you look over on this side it begins to separate so um, I'm not sure, I'm just thinking inside my head here, but I think that's why I'm having some problems getting everything to align really well. And I think the solution to that would be to um, uh, ideally um, this half circle would be cut in reverse if you could do that, and then the two sides would match perfectly. I'm not, I'm not really quite sure. Um, but anyways, as it just seems to be the nature. If anybody knows a great way to fold circles in half so that they're even on, on both sides, I would love to know how you do that. There must be a way to do that. Um, but anyways, th this is what I ended up with. So, um, okay, um, on to the next step. Hey guys, um, I have one more tip for you. Um, when you're cutting on glass and you're using a... A ruler like this that has no friction. It can slip really easily when you're holding it and trying to cut it with your X-Acto knife. And this is just something I learned from quilting. Uh, it happens to quilters a lot when they're trying to cut their fabric on um, those self-healing mats with a rotary cutter. So one thing that can help is they have these clear plastic dots that you can buy from quilting stores or online quilting shops in their Notion section. And once you put these clear dots on and then you um, place it onto something slippery like this glass. It absolutely does not move as compared to the other side. See the difference? So um, if you're having, like I have strength issues in my wrist because I have carpal tunnel. So, um, but even if you didn't, it's, it's so easy for this to slip and it's paper so expensive and you may not have another piece to spare. So if you're really worried about that, um, you can put a glue dot at the end here, not a glue dot, but these rubber dots, and on, one on the end here, 
and then it'll help prevent it from shifting while you're cutting. Um, so I had a little shifting issue, but um, I was able to recover from it, but I just thought I would tell you that. And also, um, <laughs> I, I did something very stupid. I cut um, my um, cardstock all the way in half and ruined an entire piece. So I recommend if you do this project, cut all your cardstock circles first, and then all your patterned paper circles second, because um, this was what I should have done for the pattern paper, but not the cardstock paper. So anyways, I definitely have to go to the scrapbook store and get another piece. So I probably won't be able to finish this today, but I'll go as far as I can and then finish up uh, tomorrow. Hey guys, um, I just found out something else that's quite helpful. Um, if you're trying to use this cutting mat to align your crease lines um, and you're not sure you've got it on the crease line because sometimes it's really hard to tell um, you can just lift up your paper and it's a lot easier to see am I on the line or not and then I use the same technique to place these pages down um, after I've taped them um, so you, if you just hold that page up and align it with your other circle um, it seems to be a pretty effective way to connect them. Um, I'm still not getting um, good results. Like on this section it looks pretty even on the edge but over here um, not so even. I'm still not sure how to fix that. And this was the um, <laughs> side that I cut in half and, uh, cut in half that way and I just spliced it together with some scotch tape. I didn't get it quite close enough but um, I don't know in the end it might, it might not matter. I don't think anybody's gonna tell. So anyways um, uh, I'll be back in a sec. Okay guys, we're almost at the home stretch. Once you have your four pages done, I can't even see what I'm doing here, but hopefully you guys can see that from kind of an aerial view. Um, you want to pick two sides that you want to have for the front um, covers. So Which it's going to open up so that um, you'll be able to see Oh, how do I explain this? Um, well, I, let me start over. Um, it'll make more sense um, once you see it all done, but I'm going to try my best. You want to pick two, two sides um, where the opening is going to be. And you want to cover those with patterned paper, but the rest um, of the back sides you leave blank. Okay? And um, you want to adhere some ribbon inside, well, on top of this page before you put your pattern paper over so it sticks out like this and then you can tie the two ends together and I did one side um, so you could see what it looks like when it's finished and I want to give you some tips for how I did it um, because I've made this boo-boo uh, in the past and I learned the hard way so in case you want to know what color of ribbon I'm using um, sorry you gotta reach over um, this is from the store called the paper source and it's very inexpensive, and this color is called Pool. I think it's under $4 for 10 yards for the one inch um, ribbon. Love the color, and it matched the paper really well. Um, so, hold on a sec, I gotta reposition myself. So, um, you want this section to fold up, and then you wanna fold it flat and use your bone folder to um, make those creases nice and strong. And then you want to line up your little quarter circle wedge here. And then what I did was I, I lined it up on this bottom line and I decided that I wanted the ribbon flush with the four inch mark. So the top of my ribbon would go all the way across the four inch line. And if I do that then um, the ribbon will be at the same level on both sides and when you come to tie it will look nice and neat. Um, I've done this before just eyeballing it and it looked really awkward. One side was a different height than the other by just a smidge and it kind of always bothered me. So these, um, these, these uh, cutting mats with the grid lines are really helpful for that. So um, I'll stop for now and finish my other side. Okay, um, we're two steps away from finishing. Uh, now that I've got the ribbon on the, um, on the opening, um, sides of the um, circle pop-up book. Um, the next thing we do is um, t 
tape each wedge together. So I'm going to turn these around and show you what I've done. So what I've done is I've used, um, I cashed in some of my Cricut um, reward points and got some of this terrifically tacky, tacky tape. Or um, the gal who did the uh, tutorial that I'm following used score cal tape. And um, from what I can tell, um, she just taped this side. But I, it wasn't really clear on the video and I was just a little bit concerned. So I decided to tape it here and here and I'd also like to tape it here but I have another method that I'm going to be using to um, make sure if these um, if taping it along this edge and this edge isn't enough uh, to keep them um, nice and close without separating while being handled in the future um, I'm, I have another plan for how I'm going to embellish this where something is going to be here to um, ensure that these stay close so I'll show you that at the end so I'm going to finish uh, um, score taping all my pages and then gluing them together and then I'll show you what the book looks like in the next scene. Hey guys, um, this is what the finished album looks like. Um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I was having difficulty getting my sections together so I had to rip one out several times. Um, so a lot of white paper was showing there. Fortunately, I had a paint dauber that matched the paper, so it tended to cover it up, and I, I don't think anybody's going to be looking down there for, for it, so I, I'm, I'm okay with that. And then also the um, binding area got pretty shredded, so I um, just had this um, in on hand and applied it with some um, two-way tape, and then I tacked it down in some areas with some uh, liquid glue. And then I also added these, um, this, um, I saw a sample of this from a kit from Pinecone Press at my local scrapbook store. And theirs was much bigger and they did it for Halloween. And each of these, they put these on and each of them um, had something that spelled a word. I think it was spooky or something like that. So unfortunately I only had enough for three. But I made them double sided so you can see it on the front and the back. And I had an extra one so I put it here because this paper didn't turn out to be you know, with any kind of um, focal uh, point in the middle. Um, so basically I just untie the ribbon now. Um, and I, this just came out gorgeous. I knew I was going to love this project with this paper. Um, gorgeous as in I love the paper and I think the paper made the project. So um, now the whole thing opens up and um, I'll just take if you can so um, I was a little disappointed that I put um, all of the same pattern paper in one section so um, I kind of fixed it because I had two eight eighth of a circle wedges in here and I covered it up with a quarter circle and that made it look a lot better and then in every other section I left um, this plane and I didn't cover it up and then here's another section and um, you can see um, this is the front and the back and then here's so it just goes round and round so every other section is plain pattern paper plain pattern paper and then even with this um, it opens up perfectly fine and then it closes without a problem so um, I had a really tough time using the score tape to get my pages aligned. I, I'm the worst. I, I practiced so many times in the past. I never get it right. So if you have those kind of troubles, um, for my next time I'm going to just use liquid glue so I could slide it on because I had to keep ripping it off and putting it on and then having to do a lot of repair work. So the next time I make an album like this I'm definitely going to use liquid glue when it comes time to aligning the pages together. So anyways, um, I hope you like my project. Thank you for sticking with me if you've followed it this long. Um, I had to take a lot of mini breaks because my back was hurting. And um, I'm, um, I I'm completely out of steam, but um, I really wanted to finish this up so you could see how it turned out. So thanks again for watching. And um, be sure to check out the channel for the gal who made the tutorial. I cannot thank her enough. I would have never been able to have done this without her instructions. And I hope my tips and mistakes that I made along the way will help you 
um, make your project um, with fewer mistakes than I made in mine. So again, thanks for watching and um, I um, look forward to seeing all of your videos. I really enjoy them a lot.